Okay, so we're holding in the beginning of Parshas Miketz. And um, we're going to learn part of the Paris Chaloim. But I just wanted to be Maktim, the general overview of the differences between Paris Dream as it's described by the Torah. Well, it's always by the Torah. As described in him as having it. And and when he recounts it, okay. I just want to just to. I think it's convenient to take note of them, and see the differences. So, in the description of the dream, it says he was Oymid al Hayyor, and when he said it over, he said, in the Oymid al Sfas Hayyor. Okay, the dream is described as having Sheva Paris Yifois Mare Uvias Basar. And he said, "Bios basar v'yifos toyar." And then, "Vatirena ba'achu" is the same in both. "Vinei sheva paras achir" is the same in both. "Oedus achir" is the same in both. But in the, when the in the description of the actual dream, it says the seven sec, second cows, seven other cows, who came up after them, min ha'yor, and Para leaves that out. Okay, it leaves out min ha'yor. And the second cows are described in the in the actual dream as Rois Mare the Dakois Basar and Pai describes them as Dalois the Rois Toy Armoid the Rakois Basar. In the dream it says Vata Amoina it's a la pars as far as I are. That's left out of Pai's description, that Vata Amoina. And instead Pai gives this comment about never having seen such awful looking cows in the whole land of Egypt, right? And then in the dream, the description of the dream, after that, okay, I'm sorry, that's the same. Right? And in the description of the dream, it's that's pretty abrupt. Well, when he says it over, he says there was no indication that they came on Kabena and they looked just as bad, which seems to add something to simply like the duration of the dream, right? If you read the dream, it sounds like as soon as they ate them, he woke up and boom. Because usually when it says Vayikat, especially by a dream, it's like, you know the last thing that happened sometimes you wake up from some from the shock right from like right. the thing is done and boom and then it turns out that there was actually at least in his description there was some time for him to reflect on the seven skinny cows and to see that they haven't changed so just pointing out the differences we're going to talk about a few of them tonight okay puzzle gimel vihine sheva pores acherois oilis acherehen min hayars as we noted this is one of the differences, which is that here it says min hayor, and there it doesn't. Now, the truth is, of course, if the seven paras achiris are oilis acharehen, so they're following them. So they're following them from the ur, which sort of makes the ur, min hayor, superfluous. Yeah. Okay? Now, it's of course very significant that the Sheva Paris Rois are coming from the earth. It's very odd because the earth is the source of wealth. So Mamela, that's the point of the Paris coming from the earth, right? But why are there Sheva, the Sheva Paris Acher is Oz Acher Min Hayor? That's very odd that they're coming Min Hayor. Okay? The bad ones. The bad ones. The bad ones. The right. Bad ones come from the lack of the earth. The earth is going to dry up. So first I thought, okay, that's the answer because the earth is going to dry up so that's but it's still it's not really the source of the bad ones right the r is the not the source the R-R. right it's all related right so but it could be it could be it's all revolves around the r a good r is going to give you fat cows a bad r is going to give you skinny cows so that that could be okay I'm not ruling that out but i wanted to point it out now now let's focus on the end of the gimel this is very interesting Because why is this even relevant? Why is it important, right? That the Paris Royce in Maravadagas Basar stood next to the other Paris. That's why I say it. They stood there. So before they ate them, they stood there, right? Yeah. Now, just to point out, it doesn't say about the seven Paris Royce, Vatirena Ba'ahu, right? And that's because that supports what we said last week, that the Vaterena Ba'achu is how they are Briois, Vitoivais, because they have 
Asev, like Venasati Asev Bazad Khalavim Techa, Vihalta Vizavata. So there's two sets of dreams. There's paras that are fat paras who have what to eat. That's yeah. Asib Zadha. Yeah, well, and therefore and therefore the humans have what to eat too. So if the paras, right, some say the paras represent the Kharish. Mm. So then yeah, the paras are fat because they have ahu, and then that leads to having tavua. Right? So it's like Haim Shema. Which is actually like Eretz Mitzrayim, right? But they also have that the the behemoth has to have its aziv, right. and then the humans get their food, the lechem. Okay, but either way, so the point is that the paris. Well, you could also live off the behemoth, right? To a degree as well. Right, right, right. Um, perhaps not in Mitzrayim, but they didn't eat them. That's right. But, but we. But could. they didn't eat what? They didn't eat. Benazza the didn't eat anything. What? Benazza says, if I think, Benazza says they didn't eat any animals. Yeah, I think that's what he said. Well, they can, but maybe they, they maybe they use the milk. What else do you have it for? Right. No, for work, maybe. Okay. For plowing. Okay. For work. For yeah. For sheep for work. Okay. So fine. So why is it significant that they're standing next to them? Okay. And and and, and remember again, Paro he said nothing about this, right? Paro did not say that they stood next to them, but he did say something else, right? That he never saw such bad ones. Which suggests to me that the key to understanding the significance of the seven Paris Rois standing next to the seven Paris Rois Mare is to see how that relates to Paris' statement of having, of having that he never saw such bad looking cows. That's what it suggests to me, and I think that's the case, and we can see this from which safer? Take a guess. Which safer are we going to find the answer in? Are we now in Kahalas or anything? Kahalas. Okay. Let's go to Kahalas Peg Zion, which we've been looking at a lot. Okay, so to remind you, Kahalas Peg Zion talks about the day of death and the day of birth and what's better. And that it's better to go to the base Evil than the base Mishta. So this is back, right? We spoke about the Samashim Sarif, and one of them dies on a birthday. And Yosef focuses on the base Mishta, and really the base Evil is where people remember things like Hayit and Eliboy, and Broy upon him Yitavlev. So the anger that Yosef showed the Sarah that he's going to die is is was real. There's really the opportunity for um, Yitav, Kasha Yitav Loch. Instead, he focused on the Sarah Mashkim, etc., etc., etc. Just bring you up, bringing you, um, showing you how the beginning of the pack is all about this, right? And now I want to focus on Pas Am Sukim. Um, Yud and on. Okay, Pasuk Yud says, I'm going to just bring a few points and then I'm going to bring it all together to our Pasha. Okay, let's read, we're going to read Pasuk Yud through Yud Dalet. This is Perek Zion, Pasuk Yud. Don't say, what is it, what is this that, that things used to be better than they are today? That's not a wise question. It's good to have a chachma with an inheritance. Okay, it's being in the shadow of chachma is like being in the shadow of wealth. And chachma is even better because it keeps its master alive. Observe the actions of God. Because once you mess things up, you can't fix it. So you better observe, you better understand what Hashem is doing. So you don't mess things up. On a good day, be good. And on an evil day, see. See what you can do about it. God made good and evil parallel. Which means that everything has its opposite. So man can't count on the continuance of either good or bad fortune. That's the Pasuk Yudala is saying. Everything has its opposites. So therefore you can't talk, know what's coming. Because just because you have A doesn't mean you'll continue having A. Maybe you'll have negative A. Because every in, in within everything is implied its opposite. That's the big message here in Kehelas. So you always have a thing where it's opposite. You won't have, but you won't have. Uh, you can't predict anything. What? Huh? A thing where it's opposite, but nothing that's not an opposite. Well, the, uh, whatever you have, you can't, yeah, okay. you can't predict, right? The trend only works till it turns. Whatever, basically, nothing. There's no guarantee. In, right, and in fact, in, in fact, the contrary. Well, don't get lulled into thinking whatever you have is the way it is because everything is zelumaze. So therefore, but it could reverse completely. It could reverse. It won't be reversal. So it's a built-in. You know, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be against its nature. Let's say. Yeah. 
So that's why it says also, right? Al toimar. Let's go back to pasuk yud. Don't say how is it that things used to be toiv, right? Because that's not chachma. Why is it not chachma? Because because that assumes that things are going to stay the way they are. Correct. And the true chachma tells us that the zelu mazeh. Yeah. Okay. And therefore, you never know. Therefore, you never know. Now, Yosef, what did Yosef predict? The Chachma, who, the one who's in Davin with Chacham Kamaychi, he predicted that just because there are good days in Mitzrayim doesn't mean there won't be evil days. In fact, there'll be very evil days and you shouldn't be surprised. Now, you're getting a clue, right? Pyro was very surprised at such evil looking cows. He said, I don't know where such a thing came from in Mitzrayim, which is basically like saying, He says, I know Mitzrayim very well. I know Mitzrayim up and down, back and right, inside and out. And um, there's never such a bad cow in the whole Mitzrayim. Which is basically saying, how could there be such bad chaos? But the answer is, this is, this is not loy mechachma. You need the chacham to tell you. What's the chacham going to tell you? Zel umazeh. Aha. Vata'amoyna. That's it. That's what vata, That's the message of vata'amoyna etz la paras. Vata'amoyna etz la paras is not like tzvei chedushim. The seven good cows plus enoch chedush is at the seven bags. No, the same thing. If there are seven good cows, there's going to be seven cows because zel umazeh. That's my mom shot The message of Zelu Maza is about to to our parts. Okay? So that's what I want to say. So that's why, okay, Pare said, Leira Isi Kahena, right? Leira Isi Kahena and Zelu Maza and Vata Amoyna go together because Pare is basically saying, he's basically missing the message of Vata Amoyna by saying Leira Isi Kahena. Right, the reason why he replaces it with Leira Isi Kahena because it's the same thing. Vata Amoyna et Salaparis is the solution to Pare's Tamiya. That where these pack cows come from. But he never said that about because, the good ones. Yeah, it makes perfect Exactly. The good ones made perfect sense. He didn't say there were the best cows I ever saw because, yeah, they, it made sense that Mitzrayim should have great cows. Right. Yeah. Right. And now what he didn't understand was that if there's good, there's bad. And I, I would suggest also that's why he left out. Well, he said it says, Now, why, is it, why are the bad cows coming from the Yor? And why does the Pazak say that? It says, The answer is that's the point. If there's Yor, which gives you wealth, that very, that very thing automatically, there's a lezum of mazah that has to balance, has to be maintained, so it would, as it were. And if there's um, a, a source of blessing, then there's also curse. That is, so in a certain sense, the yar is the source of curse, because if there's blessing, if there's soiva, there's rav. If there's blessing, there's klala. If there's toiv, there's ra. Okay? So that's what the Pasuk stresses. Oilas achrei min ha yar. Wait, one second, one second, right? That's what the Pasuk stresses. Oilas achrei min ha yar. Right? And Pyro left that out because Pyro didn't understand where the second parts are coming from, basically. Right? That was Zolkasha. He didn't understand how the R could be a source of the bad parts, which is why he said, I don't know where these things came from. But in fact, they came from the same place where the original cows came from, Minayar, and they stood next to them as if to say, same way there's good cows, so there's bad cows, and I'll turn my Mehaya because Adar it all goes together. What about the time you're going to last life? Right. I suggest that there isn't bad also. Till here. <laughs> That's the point. Right. Of course, you're 100% right. The normal way, like, the fact yeah. is, Mitzrayim doesn't have a rough as a rule. Right. This is anomalous. Right. But, but Kehela says, what? This is the anomaly. Oh. Yes, but Kehela is saying that this anomaly is actually tells us some deeper truth. That inherently there is a Lumaz. Uh, yeah. Even though it never happened. Yes, I think so. I think so. Look, you want to exp- okay. Look, we have to figure out like this. What exactly? If you wanted to get to Imic, which we usually don't do, we usually we stick to the surface. But now, what is Kellis talking about? What does it mean? Right? What is the message of this Luba Zen? Mm-hmm. What exactly is the point? Why? Right? I don't know why. I don't know what. But what I do know is we have to think about the Imic Adavar. But once there's an Imic Adavar, then the point the point is that what's happening in Mitzrayim reflects that oimic it's not an observation about reality you could have a kingdom that's 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 doing great for five thousand years but it's a drusha it's saying this this fact that there's this reversal of fortunes in mitzrayim reflects a certain deep truth about hashem and the sanhaga right you understand okay you agree because i i accept that it's that it's it reflects hanaga in a, in a meta sense right it doesn't always what, you, what we're saying is it has it happens in this case in a practical sense because yes. it is that way in a medicine. Correct. It doesn't Correct. always have to happen 
hundred percent. And Parry is any chesaron that Parry has is not that he didn't study econ- economics or agriculture. Right. His chesaron is he doesn't know he doesn't know theology. He doesn't know kel. He doesn't know, he doesn't know metaphysics, right. and he didn't know this. Right? He didn't know this rule, right. which is what Dan Hager that is pointing to. Right? That's what Parry didn't know. So which, if you remember, of course, what? Yeah. So it happened. It happened once. Yeah, it happened okay. once, is that right? It brings a point. And of course, this, this, this continues, of course, the Saramashkim Saraifim, right? Which was that the Zelu Umazer, one dies and one lives, and there's Ace Laled, Ace Lamos, it's really all the same thing, right? It's the same thing's happening over here, too. Yeah. Right, exactly. Now, go back over there and see what, see what it says. I want to focus on, on, two other, on the two Psalms in the middle. Look at Pasuk Yud Gimel, and you dial it again in Kahalas Parag Zain, where it says, Re'eyas Maase Helikim. Okay, so it gives you advice that you have to observe the actions of God. Basically, you have to know what, you have to be an observer and take note. And then the next passage says, Yom Taifa, great, just enjoy it. Of Yom Ra'a Re'e. An evil day, see. See what? See what you can do. Right? Yere Paray. Yosef told Paray, Va'ata Yere Faray Ish Noven Nuchacham, right? Because Hashem showed you, as Hashem Elohim Oisa Her Oes Paray. Which is that's you, that's the mitzvah is to reayas maase elokim. So Hashem gave you an, a, an opportunity to be raya, mm-hmm. and you know that there's a yom ra. Yeah. So therefore re'a, what to do? That's the point of a yom ra is yei rapari. Why does Hashem show you what to do so that you can say, hey, this is ra, and do something about it? See what you can do about it. Okay. Right. And Pari said, one second. And Pari said, loy ra isi kahena chalas v'tzayim lo is because he doesn't get this thing that is toiva and ra, and you have to be raya. And he's not being right. He's not. He's, he refuses to be right. Basically, he refuses to be right. The raw, right? Because he doesn't know. Yeah, Adraba, look. Then they then know what to do. Exactly. And in the Zayim, where you always have, you have consistent good. You have good and zelaslachem. You don't know how to ensure. You don't expect these sorts of things. So I'm telling you, do this because. You know, other countries where you sometimes you have good years, sometimes right. you have bad years. Right. You plan in the good years for the right. bad years because right. sometimes it goes this way. With you, you, right. don't, you don't know this happens. So right. I'm telling you, now we, we, do, now right. we know it's happening. It can happen. Now we're told we know we're Correct. Going to Correct. And we also know, right, we also know that, that actually, if you see the good, yeah. that itself points to seeing the bad, right? Power is Lyra Isi. He, he, he doesn't see the Yom Ra. And the, 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 really, the, tr- the truth is that you don't have to see the Roya, right? Yeah. If you see the Taiv, you already see the Ra. And therefore, you should really, like you're saying, you should, you should think about it and realize it's a reality, and you should know what to do about it. Stop planning what to do about it, okay? Now, I want to show you even more about this. So, Pari is Loi Roisi, Loi Roisi Kahena, right? So, what does he see? Okay, he, he refuses to see the, the, the Ra, basically. So now I want to take you to another place in Kelsey and you'll see another thing's going on about this, which is this. Let's go back to Perik Hay. Perik Hay, to remind you, at the end of Perik Dalet talks about the young king and the old king and the king who came out of jail and the second child and the Kates and Kates, right? And the beginning of Perik Hay talks about God being heaven, you being in earth and dreams, right? And we spoke about this last week. You heard last week's show, you said, right? Yes. Right? Then it talks about if you make a vow, don't delay it. So we said this is talking about the Saha Mashkim who delayed his, his well, not promise, but he owed something to Yosef. And don't let yourself indict your, your, own, your own self. Don't let your mouth indict yourself. Don't, tell, don't say it's a mistake. And then God's going to get angry at you. Right? Pirate cuts off a lot of And it talks about Chaloimus and Avalim. And then it talks about don't be surprised that there's a lot of injustice because, the, because eventually it gets to the king. And as we spoke about, right, Pare Choyling. How is it the Saramashkin was so unjust to the rush, to Yosef, to impoverish Yosef? Don't be surprised. Sometimes it takes till it gets all the way to the king, or Pare Choyling, right? Okay, next Pasik, Pasik Ches. V'yisra in Eretz Bakoil hu melech l'sod in Nevad. So I don't know exactly what this means. Something about the king being enslaved, becoming an Evid. Okay, and something about the arts and the Sada, of course. Which Pare, right? Pare, Pare had to, um, Pare had to do something with the arts and the Sada. Oyev Kesef lo Yisba Kesef. So this is about Kesef and Tavua. Okay, very major themes, of course, in in um, in Parshas Miketz. And then let's look at Pasuk Yud. Your voice had Tova Rabu Eichle. When there's a lot of good, there's a lot of people to eat it. Uma Kisher and the Vola Kiim Rose Enav. What does the owner have? So he's saying, look at this. You have a lot of Tova. So you think, oh, you have a lot of Tova. So you're very wealthy. But the truth is, the wealthy you are. There's gonna be a lot of people coming who want to eat it. 
So like uh, supply creates demand, I guess it's saying something, some theory like that, right? So the, no, so the point is all that the owner has is us enough, right? Well, so you can only enjoy so much. The rest of other people are going to either take or you're just going to sit there and you're going to look at them. Okay, could be, could be. But, That's similar to me. But it's, I think it's like this. You look at the next passage. Then it talks about the, the person who's an Eved, Mesuka Shnasa Eved. If you want to <coughs> sleep well, then you have to work. And it doesn't matter how much you eat. In Ma'atama be right and on, if you're wealthy that's going to stop you from sleeping right so now that's what's happening with Paroi Paroi has so much wealth and he understands that Paroi's Toivus others man makes perfect sense to him right but now but he can't sleep right and really what's going to happen is yes he has a lot of wealth but he's not going to get anything from it because he has it's going to be consumed by the seven Seven skinny cows, right? Bevois I tell you about seven fat cows. Rabo yeah. Echleho is yeah. Every reboy has a corresponding reboy of of a, ne- a negative, right? If there's a lot positive, there's a negative, it's gonna be consumed. Everything nets out. But right? that's a mom's the theme of callous. There's no such thing as surplus. All you can get as ownership as being an owner is Ruos Enov. You can observe. Mm-hmm. And if you know how to observe, like we saw before AS Masa Elikim, and you know, oh, there's a young taiva, there's a young raw, you can know what to do to not to be ma'avis, what God is doing. Then to plan, but right. Then, but then what your result is, like, uh, like, yeah, right? Yeah, so what? That because of that, you got the kesef. Wait a second. Oh, look at the next Pasuk in Kehelas. Wait, well, I want to go there in a minute, but now Pasuk Yudalaf, right? It's saying you have to be an Eved, mm-hmm. right? If you think that you're wealthy and you are so and, and you have Saiva, you're not going to be able to sleep. If you want to sleep, it's not about how much you eat, it's about being an Eved. And that's the Pasuk earlier said, right? That the, that the Melech has to become an Eved. Mm-hmm. Pari had to become an Eved. He had to work for his people, I would suggest it means. Now look at now, you're talking about how I got rich. Let's see what happened to his wealth. Right? Because what happened, Yosef said to Pai, Vishamaru, let's get all the food together, Vishamaru. And that's because of that, very lucky this was called Kesef. And Yay Pai becomes so wealthy. Why? Because eventually the wealth goes to Bizas Mitzrayim, assuming that. To Bizas Mitzrayim. So that's why I would say that's also happening. Okay. So that's that. So what? So, so that's what? Yeah. So right, in this case. But now, so then when the Pasuk says, look, the case is a symbol. You have to understand. It's, it, as long as it all works out, then the sim- symbolism is preserved. In other words, Kahalas is referring to some sort of Imek, which we have to figure out, right? Yeah, it works the out. Imek, the Imek is not necessarily only this case. Exactly. Also, exactly. Also exactly. 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 he had a choice. He could have done otherwise. Who? All right. Where? Where did he have a choice? He had a choice. Right, and look at that. We have to figure this all out. I mean, <clears throat> or maybe, right, we have to figure this all out. Because he's the kind of person that he is, who doesn't know, who doesn't look, unless you force him to. No, I don't agree with you. He's supposed to get all the kasef so that you continue the cycle of, of, of Rabu Echleha. That's that's the point. That's a, you're asking, ah, he got rich. Yeah, but the Kalas t- teaches that the only purpose of being rich is to is to find more people to eat it and don't think you're getting anything from it. If you try, think you're getting something from it, you won't be able to sleep again. So no, probably would have not been able to sleep again, so had he. What? What's the Eitzah? The Eitzah is Ruz Einov. That's the Eitzah. That's because, just look. And that's what Yosef tells Pari. I said, Kim Oisa, Hera as Pari. That's the big kunz. Is stop thinking about how wealthy you are. Stop thinking about everything's doing great. You have the completely wrong mindset. You can't sleep because you're so wealthy. Mm-hmm. Because you're so thinking about your greed. You're so, you're so worried about losing it. That's why you're having these nightmares about mm-hmm. seven skinny cows. You can't even imagine where they came from because you refuse to acknowledge the fact that there's a God who has, who has this and that, and you're just an observer, and the most you can do, and this is what you should do, and it's very special that God wants you to do this, is observe and don't be ma'avis. And step. And now the question is, of course, why do you have to step in and tweak it and make it good when God has a plan? That I can't explain, but right? But that's be your It's that God is toiv and ra, and you're, but you're the observer, so you're sort of part of the system. I mean, obviously, you can go back, obviously, if you want, you really go back to Bereshis. There's toiv and ra, yeah. and all, it's all about ra'ia. Because like we are Terah Isha and we are the Kemis called it Tai, right? But we introduce Ra and we're supposed to see when there's Ra and step in and adjust it so that there's Tai. In other words, the fact that there's Tai and Ra is, is because of humans. And therefore, God, God allowed the humans to, to get involved in the Tai and Ra thing. In fact, they make the Ra. And therefore, when there is Ra, He wants us to be Raya and make it back to Tai. Maybe that's happening. But in this case, save the save the money. What do you mean, save the food in each situation? It's only going to pieces of time, not to him anyway. 
No, no, no. Again, he was supposed to save the money, become rich, and, and do more of this. And now, become, and now start understanding more about Taif. And therefore? What do you mean, and therefore? And if he would understand more, what would he do? He would, he would, what would he have done next? He would have done some great works. Done yeah, he would have done some big, great works, exactly. He would have done in fact, it was Aisha Shama Lubal of Lira Asa, because in fact, he didn't. Whatever, you see what happened. Right? Perhaps. Okay. Yeah, right. good. You're interesting. If, uh, right, right. We have to look. We have to look what happens on the meekets. Could be, could be, could be, could be. Not to keep it. Right, right, right. But to use it. Right, could be exactly. So you have to see, we have to see where things went wrong. But right, but the, the, the theory is okay. You, you're becoming an observer on the um, Yom Tov and Yom Ra'ah, and that's the whole point. And that's what's so special about being an Asher and being a Bailam of Ashiros is that we're us enough. Okay, and the what that's part of the big mistake is Lyra EC. He's not opening his eyes to seeing that this reverse Atoiva comes along with the Rabbi Echleha and starting to wisen up to God's ways. Instead, he's, he's trying to keep it for himself, and that's why he can't sleep, right? Well, you can, you can, get, you can get a guide the Rabbi Echleha. Right, right, right. That's what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, 100%. He's supposed to do that. He's supposed to do that, yeah. But I was saying, okay, I think there's two meanings here. Reverse Atoiva Rabbi Echleha is like, don't think that you're going to keep it because there's going to be people that eat it. So those are the seven skinny cows. And then, like you're saying, right, so what's the answer? The answer is to, to, to be smart about the Rabbi Echleha. He saw that his father was a Rabbi Echleha. He saw that his relative was going to lose a certain amount of money. Right, right, right. Okay, so what's the point? He pressed him to give tzedakah, right. almost that amount. So right. He would lose it at the time, not the time. Right, right. So you're saying that what? That means that, that, that you, you, if you see it, you know what to do. Right, very good. How are you going to use it? For Oseina, for Oseina. Right, so when you know, it's very good, excellent. So when, when Hashem gives you a window into seeing what he's up to, right. it doesn't mean you're going to change, it doesn't mean you're going to change the, the basic, no, the basic uh, ne negative, little master positive, but you can figure out where it goes. Wait a yeah. Okay. So very good, excellent. So now like this. So, so, so Yosef told Parai, Masuka Shnasa Eved, right? That was the secret that Parai found out. Masuka Shnasa Eved and Melech Lasada Ne'evad. Which means that um, he's basically telling Parai that uh, a melech has to be an Eved. Yeah. Right? Which is very... And of course, he tells Parai you have, to, you have to do something. It's not about having the wealth. It's about what you do with it. And you have to do something about it. And that's very appropriate because that's the Dover. We spoke in the beginning of Ayeshev, right? Ashiveni Dover. Yosef has to find the Dover. Ad es boi Dvorai in Masashem Tzafasu. He has to find the Dover to be a king. <clears throat> and we find the same thing by um, Rechavam, who was told, who told the people who came to demand that he lighten the load, right? And and, and he, he had to. He said, "Ma'ashiv, ma'ashiv, ma'ashiv lama zedavar." And the answer was, should have been the atzas as a kenim was imatotia eved lama zed, right? As the Gemara says, in Hurius, of course, right? Machus is not Machus. It's Avdus. That's the secret to being a Melech. So that's the secret that Yosef had to learn from being an Eved, right? Um, he had to learn how to be a Melech. And that's the secret he's giving to Paroi. Melech is the Nevad. You think you're the king who has everything. In fact, you're the king who's the, most, the greatest Eved because you're the manager of this whole country. And it's not about you having something from it because there's no guarantee you'll have anything. And that's only going to make you not be able to sleep. And if you want to be godly, you have to be an Eved, you have to be Roya, and figure out what to do. Okay? Now, by the way, I just want to tell you, some others say, the, um, the Chizkunia and the B'yayas B'chashah, I think so, this, that <clears throat> they, they all mean on this Vata Amoidna. What's Vata Amoidna? And they say, like this, they say, Vata Amoidna tells us that during the years of hunger, there was still food. Because it says in the end of the Parak Nadalid, it says, yeah. So that's what Ta'amoyna, that it was simultaneous, that at the same time that there was Rav, there was also Sava. Okay, that's what they say, just mentioning it. But there was because but, yeah, I know, that's why it gets tricky. Right. They, I think they understand that the dreams reflect the way things actually were. Because uh -huh. the Ramban and others say the next Pasuk, but the Chal Nahaparais, they learn means. During the years of the hunger, that, that's not that's 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 part of Yosef's advice that they learn. Where's Yosef coming and giving advice? They say no. That's Yosef is interpreting the dream. It's what does it mean? The right, the dream is telling you what to do because what does the dream mean that the paros heroes consumed the paros It means that during the seven years of hunger, we should eat the food that we saved. So they're reading 
that the interpretation or the advice is part of the dream. So I think that goes along with that. I mean, but, you can read it to both ways, but yes, that's definitely the better way to, to do it's it. It's Machalik Zushayim, right. Some say Vatechan Rashi says Vatechan means we won't remember them. Won't remember them. Um, which means that then the advice changes the dreams, right? And that's like we're saying, Yerah, Yerah, Re'eh. Because that's what the Baramban says, like, where's Yosef coming giving the advice? We spoke about this, because you know, the point is the purpose of a dream is that. That's, I, don't, I don't, the Kasha doesn't bother me. Okay, let's just start Pasuk Dalid and make one, one Ha'ara. Vatechal, no, he doesn't ask that. And that's not a Kasha. He says, Misa Mo Yoyetz Lepar. Vatechal no Ha'poris Royce Ha'mar Vedakas Ha'bosar. Okay, so this follows um, Pasuk Gimel. The Paris are called Royce Ha'mar Vedakas Ha'bosar. Those paris eight sheva paris yifoyis hamayim b'habariyos. That's what they're called in pasuk beis. Vayikatz pare. So just here it says vatechalna, but the shabbalim says vatevlana because paris eat, but by inanimate objects it says vatevlana like vayivla arnis matayisam, matayarnis matayisam. I'm sorry. And um, okay, as we pointed out before, I'm not going to talk about it. I just want to point it out again that here it says that he gets pare, Mashri woke up right away. And in, when he described the dream, it sounds like he had time to notice that they were as awful looking as they were in the beginning, right? Which may have something to do with the fact that he commented on the fact that how awful they looked in the first place, right? Seems to go along with that. So I have to think about that. And the other point, I just want to just read the pasuk and get us into the. Weiter, but I'm going to end here. The other question is just why, of course, why does he wake up and have a second dream? Why is it important that he's waking up in the middle? And we shall see about these. It's next.